think, 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 where to start. So, um, these are my thoughts on the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. So, um, this is pretty much, um, one of Disney's, uh, later package films. Like, yeah, most of them were in the 40s, but, uh, I guess they might have gotten one or two in before that, or I mean after the 40s, um, and here's a fine example of that. It's a, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, um, well, uh, what, what do you call it? Well, it's a package film of all of the uh, Winnie the Pooh cartoons that were made, like, in the 60s, so, yeah, the movie's from 77, but, yeah, the shorts are, like, a little over a decade older than that, but, um, but, uh, either way, the shorts are great, and, yeah, they, uh, put them together very seamlessly for this movie, and, um, you know, the story flows perfectly, and, uh, yeah, um, let's see, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we got, uh, so the three stories are, first, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, which, um, you know, is about uh, Pooh trying to get uh, honey from bees, and then and then he gets honey from Rabbit, and then he gets all fat, and he can't fit through Rabbit's, um, you know, you know, front door, as he calls it, because um, it's like a little hole that he climbs through. Um, but, uh, <coughs> so, yeah, they gotta save Pooh from the hole by, like, waiting for him to, like, slim down, which takes some days, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, they basically starve Pooh for, the, during those days, so yeah. Um, the second short is Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. Um, yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> yeah, the thing starts getting windy around the Hundred Acre Wood, and, uh, you know, uh, Pooh meets Tigger for the first time, who, uh, warns him about Heffalumps and Woozles, who, uh, you know, Pooh, Pooh that, or yeah, he warns them that they steal honey, so he, uh, has to guard the honey, and then he, like, falls asleep and has a nightmare, he wakes up and everything's flooded, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, like, really uh, summarize every little thing that happens in these uh, stories, because, you know, they they're kind of, they kind of have, like, a slice of life thing going on, um, you know, there's, you know, there's all these little directions they go in, and, you know, some of them are mostly inconsequential, but, you know, they're, like, little moments, you know, um, but yeah, everything gets flooded, and then, like, uh, Pooh and Piglet are, uh, caught in the flood, and, uh, um, yeah, but they manage to get out of it. Um, and then the third, um, yeah, the third cartoon is Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. Um, so, uh, looking at the years on these shorts, um, uh, the first one's from 66, the second one's from 68, the third one's from 74. So, you know, the cartoons aired, you know, about a decade before this movie came out. Um, or at least the first one did. The, the last one is just a couple years before that, but still. Um, yeah, um, so... Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2 is about Tigger, you know, bouncing everybody, and they get sick of it, mainly Rabbit, and, yeah, then they get him lost in the woods, but then he, you know, finds his way out, where Rabbit finds himself in trouble, and, uh, yeah, Tigger saves him, um, but then later, like, Tigger, like, later during the winter, Tigger gets stuck in a tree, along with Rue, who's not nearly, um, as scared as he is, but, uh, you know, they're stuck in a tree for a bit, and then, you know, Christopher Robin and everybody else, they save both of them from the tree, although, um, well, for Tigger, they, uh, yeah, basically the narrator saves the day in the end, so that's kind of funny, um, and there's a lot of great jokes in here, um, let's see, um, 
And, you know, there, it's kind of interesting, the pattern. Like, each of these shorts kind of ends with, like, someone needing to be saved. Like, you know, the first short is uh, them saving Pooh from Rabbit's door. And then, um, yeah, the second one is them having to save Pooh and Piglet. I guess mainly Piglet from the flood. And then... Yeah, and the third one, saving Tigger and Rue, mainly Tigger from the tree. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting pattern between the three. Um, and yeah, again, they all have some great little moments. Um, you know, um, there's some great humor throughout. Um, the characters are lovable, I think. Um, you know, if you know any of the Pooh, you know all these characters, and yeah. Pooh, Piglet, Eeyore, um, Kangaroo, Tigger, Rabbit, Owl, Gopher, um, and yeah, uh, the narrator as well as uh, his own character, uh, and uh, it's kind of funny how uh, Christopher Robin is voiced by, you know, uh, three different, uh, <laughs> yeah, three different uh, kids, um, so he's voiced by, I guess he's voiced by a different kid for each short, and I would say it's kind of funny how he keeps switching voices throughout the movie, but then again, uh, yeah, Arthur and uh, Sword in the Stone went, switched back and forth between three voices constantly, like, throughout the movie, so it, yeah, I guess it isn't that crazy. Um, and I'm looking at, uh, um, yeah, I'm looking at the... Uh, voices and it looks like um like there's one who's um yeah bruce ritherman american filmmaker and former ch child actor i mean it's showing their photos and everything um john walmsley um looks like he's a musician um and timothy turner i, I guess he's not really known for anything aside from um yeah the poo short but uh well, his name sounds like uh, the kid from Fairly Odd Parents, so yeah. Um, and then I think just about everyone, um, all the other voice actors seem to be pretty, um, or you know, they might have all done at least one other Disney uh, property. I mean, Sterling Holloway, of course, is Pooh. Um, he's done a bunch of Disney stuff. You know, he played a snake, he played a grinning cat, he played a you know, a stork, and et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on with him. Um, let me see. John Fiedler? Am I pronouncing his name right? I mean, he's got a very distinctive voice, and I'm sure he's done some other, uh, um, yeah, Disney stuff. Um, let me see. Uh, well, he's in Rescuers. Oh, and uh, he's also in Robin Hood. Yeah. Um, let me see. Eeyore... Uh, I'm not sure who Ralph Wright is. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, I see uh, Bambi, Saludos Amigos. Okay, so, yeah, I'd probably say, like, just about everybody. Um, I think one of Rue's voice actors was the uh, kid elephant from Jungle Book. Kanga was voiced by the same lady who voiced uh, Lady from Lady and the Tramp, as well as um, um, Meriwether from Sleeping Beauty. Uh, Paul Winchell, who voiced Tigger, did he do anything else Disney-related? I mean, he did a lot of stuff, but uh, uh, he's in Fox and the Hound, Aristocats. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, let me see, Rabbit. Can I name anything else he's done? Oh, um, actually, oh, yeah, he was Archimedes in Sword of the Stone. And he's also in 101 Dalmatians. Um, Scotty, I uh, I can't remember who that is, but uh, and then I talked about Hal Smith before. Um, yeah, um, has he done anything else Disney? Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm going on and on about these stupid voice actors, but uh, well, he's in the Beauty and the Beast movie years later. Um, I don't know, I'm just pointing out, um, oh, he's one of the elephants in Jungle Book. Um, yeah, I'm getting off topic. Um, 
the narrator, I believe, is voiced by the same guy who voiced Bagheera and Jungle Book, and I guess that just leaves Gopher. Um, yeah, just to finish this. Um, <laughs> he's in Alice in, of Wonderland in Paris. He was the frowning king, so yeah, I remember that character. Um, so, yeah, um, but that's not Disney. Um, uh, looks like he's the only one who doesn't have any other... Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't see anything else with him. Okay, anyway, I've been going on about these voice actors. But anyway, yeah, I, these are great shorts. Um, they put them together really well. Um, I think, you know, the main flaw with the movie is it's just, um, you know... Uh, you know, it's a package film. I think package films don't tend to earn themselves any higher than a 7, but I don't know. I might consider giving this movie, like, somewhere between a 7 and an 8, because, um, I don't know. The, the shorts are great. Um, I greatly enjoyed the movie. I had a small smile on my face while I, the whole time while I, while I was watching it. Um, you know, there's a lot of nostalgic memories, like, you know, that, uh, you know, opening sequence of, uh, Christopher Robin's room, where you see all these, uh, yeah, you see all the stuffed animals that are the Hundred Acre Wood characters, um, you know, the cuckoo clock, um, and then the book opening, and we see, uh, you know, we meet all the characters, and, uh, Piglet looks different because they first made that opening sequence for uh, Honey Tree, which Piglet's not in. He doesn't make his first appearance until Blustery Day. But yeah, he uh, but he's in the opening of uh, Honey Tree, which uh, so I guess that's why his art style looks so different. Um, or, you know, his design. Um, anything else to add? I mean... I mean, I didn't really grow up with uh, Honey Tree or uh, Blustery Day, but I did have a VHS tape of Tigger 2. Um, and yeah, I used to watch that all the time as a little kid. And uh, yeah, this is another one where I kind of remember every little thing that happens. Although I don't... It's uh, not one of those things that I quote verbatim almost like uh, Robin Hood was. But uh, yeah, still, I watched it a lot. Um... And yeah, I remember every little thing. Um, and, yeah. I kind of feel like this might be one of those movies that I could do a Mash It review of. Because, um, you know, there's a lot of things I can make fun of for on one hand. But, you know, it's definitely going to be one of those more positive Mash It reviews. Um, but, yeah. Uh, let's see. I mean, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, if nothing else, I mean, it's just, this is just a, these are just adorable cartoons with adorable characters, and, uh, and yeah, I, yeah, this is a movie definitely worth checking out for anyone who's into this kind of stuff, who's into Winnie the Pooh in general, just, uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend it, um, and yeah, I, I guess I would give it a 7 just for the fact that it's a package film, but, you know, the shorts themselves get an 8, or at least an 8. I mean, I might even give them like a 9 or something. So, I don't know. I mean, it's... Either way, it's still still very much, much worth the watch. And yeah, I rec definitely recommend it. Um... And if there's anything else I feel I need to add, I'll put it in the comments. But, you know, I think most of the little things to talk about I can probably say for a proper Mash It review. Because I think there's there's some material to work with for this one. But, yeah, definitely not in a bad way. I mean, there might be a few things to pick apart. But aside from that, um, but yeah, it, I, I, love Winnie, I love Winnie the Pooh. I mean don't know too many people who don't. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who hate his uh, fluffy guts, but, uh, eh, well, I guess the president of China, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, either way, yeah, just great, 
great Disney cartoons. Um, and yeah, this was a good movie. So I'll leave it at that for now. Um, Mash it and smash it, signing off.